Taking a look at the packaging, you'll see we have the GPS, we have the one key return to home, follow me mode, waypoints, got a 2K camera, and it's for 14 years and older. Got a nice little handle here on the top, and you can see the box is definitely very interesting with this creature looking face on the back. This is the Snaptain SP700. Let's go ahead and open up the box and we'll see exactly what you get. You get some propellers extra set. You get your instruction manual, which is very detailed. Definitely read that. And you get your controller here, which looks really nice. Actually feels really good on the sticks. It looks like it has a lot of functionality. These antennas here are just for looks. Uh, they are not actually functional. So you can just kind of keep them folded out of the way, tucked out of the way or you can even pull them off as you'll see in the flight test. These buttons on the back do, don't do anything and it takes four AA batteries to charge the transmitter here. Got a lot of different buttons and functions on this remote so we'll make sure we check that out and it has a nice little uh, screen on the front to give us some telemetry data. All right, and flipping the box over, we can go ahead and take a look at the actual drone itself. We have a couple little warranty information. Here's the battery charger. A balanced little charger. Here is the phone mount holder, a screwdriver with a prop wrench and some extra screws. And you are given one battery as a two cell, it has an XT30 connector and a balanced lead, which is nice because you can put it on a hobby grade charger, which I definitely recommend doing. Um, and this is a 1800 milliamp 25C 7.4 volt pack. Should give us a decent flight time. And here it is the Snaptane. Camouflage Monster uh, SP700 with a 2K camera here on the front. Uh, no stabilization or gimbal, but um, it does have a decent quality camera. Here's your micro SD card on a slot. Holds up to a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Uh, and I, I like the way that that's easy to access it. Um, and then there's a little, little latch lock button on the back to lock in the battery once you plug that in. Nice looking quadcopter. We got brushless motors on here. Uh, this quadcopter does look very similar to another type of quadcopter, which I won't mention. Um, but these are brushless motors on this one. So this is the first Snaptain GPS brushless motor quadcopter. We have some nice rubber feet on the bottom, which I really like. Gives you that nice soft landing. And they feel really good in the hands. Nice shiny camouflage paint job. Looks real good. Here's the snap mount for the phone device holder, which I really like. It's um, it's very durable, and it seems like it holds your device in nice and tight. And I like the little um, extra angle on the clamp, which really holds your device in there. And I like the way it snaps into place. Like I said, these antennas, you can just fold them out of the way or just pull them out. They are just for looks. They are not actually functional. There's no wires in there. Uh, you can see what the device looks like here in the mount. It holds it very nice and steady, and it is tilt adjustable, which I really like. So you can go ahead and tilt that down if you need to go ahead and take a look. That's everything you get in the packaging. Let's go ahead and take this guy out for a flight test, and we'll go over all the functionality and see how it performs. All right, here for the flight test of the new Snaptane SP700 out here at the park uh, just uh, after sunrise. And... The wind's not that bad right now, so it'll be a good time to go ahead and test it. A little bit cloudy, so the color's not going to be as great. So in order to get your Snaptane all set up for the first time, we need to uh, bind the controller to the aircraft. So the first thing you want to do is set the drone down and be right behind it. Now you want to turn on your remote control first. And as you can see, I removed these little antennas on the top here. They were just for looks, and they kind of get in the way of your phone. So uh, just go ahead and just pull them out if <clears throat> you don't really uh, want them in your way. They don't serve any purpose other than looks. Go ahead and turn on the controller. You'll get a beep. Now what you're going to do is go ahead and plug in your battery. Just go ahead and slide this in. Turn your lock latch. We got a long beep on the controller indicating that the controller is bound to the aircraft. Now, let's go ahead and connect to the Snaptane app here. So what you're gonna wanna do is have, leave your mobile data turned on. You're gonna download the Snaptane Eco app. Go ahead and pull it up. Uh, we're gonna say, allow to access device. We're gonna allow, allow. Now, what you wanna do first is go ahead and connect and it's going to give us some warnings here we're going to turn on the turn off my bluetooth 
we're gonna turn on the Wi-Fi to connect to the Snaptain. So go in your Wi-Fi settings and you're gonna be looking for the Snaptain SP700. Go ahead and connect to the aircraft. It's probably gonna give you a message saying, you know, you don't have internet available. Just go ahead and click OK. We're just gonna put stay connected. Now this is using the 5G Wi-Fi, so make sure you have a 5G Wi-Fi enabled device, a newer cellular phone. This is the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Okay, we're connected. So there's our video. What you wanna do, first of all, is open up the map, the Google map. Pull up your map, get your map to load on the screen. You can see there we are right there. Once your map has loaded on your device, then you're gonna go ahead and turn on your Wi-Fi to connect to the drone. Okay, it says we're connected. We have a strong signal now. Now, this is very important. You wanna go over here and turn off your mobile data. Okay, so you wanna do it in that order. So go ahead and open up the map, disconnected from the drone. Once your map loads, go ahead and connect to the Wi-Fi of the Snaptain. Then you wanna go ahead and turn off your mobile data because what could happen is your mobile data can interfere with the Wi-Fi. All right, so now that we have that all set up, we need to go ahead and do our uh, calibrations. First thing you want to do is go ahead and ca calibrate the gyros. You want to stand directly behind the craft, take your sticks and move them to the right. You'll see the LEDs start rapidly flashing, indicating that the gyro has been calibrated correctly. All right, now we're going to go ahead and do the compass calibration. You don't want anything metal in your pockets. So go ahead and rotate the dr drone in a circular motion. Okay, you see the, the, the green LEDs change. Now you're gonna turn the drone this way, the camera facing up, keep spinning. Keep Okay, we got the red on the front, green on the back, indicating that the compass calibration was successful. Now we're gonna go ahead, and if you push the camera button once, it will take a photo. If you push and hold, it will start to record a video. And you see here, we have a little recording icon. Let me go ahead and uh, turn on my screen recorder here. So, in order to arm the aircraft, you have to push the lock unlock button. Now, if you can't get the controller to bind doing it the way I just showed you, what you need to do is instead of just turning on the remote um, before the craft, push and hold in on this lock button, then turn on the remote, then plug in your battery on the Snaptain. That should go ahead and get it bound correctly if it doesn't do it the way I showed you. So, in order to take off, we're gonna push the lock unlock button. The props are spinning now. Now you can either push this button on the left here or you can just move the left stick up. I'm gonna go ahead and push up. And if you don't um, do anything within a certain amount of time, it does disarm, so don't be alarmed. So, go ahead and push. And we're going to see what the uh, compass calibration looks like. Okay, so we're getting some weird movement there. Let me see how many satellites we have. 15 satellites. Getting some weird toilet bowling here. That is a weird. Uh, it's getting that drift there. A little bit of drift. So um, we need to go ahead and recalibrate the compass because it's not holding its position. And we are in GPS mode, you see. But look at that drift that we're getting. One thing I do like is the screen here shows you some of your stats, your distance, your satellites. Let's go ahead and bring this back down. Okay, we need to go ahead and do another compass calibration. All right, so I'm getting some kind of a, it's, it's either an interference or a, um, 
Something going on with the compass here. You're getting a lot of drift out of this. Um, let me check my GoPro settings and make sure that my Wi-Fi and everything on the GoPro is turned off. Because that may be interfering. That may be interfering with the drone here. So let me go ahead and... All right, so I got the Wi-Fi turned off on my GoPro. We're going to go ahead and try this again. So it's, it's just giving me a little bit of drift. Let me try to go ahead and start the recording. And I tried it on the app and that worked fine. Let's go ahead and take it out for a little spin. Just gonna take it for a little spin, see how it flies. Okay, you see we have our stats on the screen as well as on the controller, which I really like. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at it now. See if it's stable, stabilized at all. So it's gotten a little bit more stable. But it's still continuing to drift a little bit within like, you know, a couple feet. Let's go ahead and take it over here. Let's go ahead and try the, um, headless mode. Okay, so the headless mode was turned on from the factory and it works fine. Let's go ahead and fly over this way a little bit. Do a little look through the trees here. All right, that was fine. Let's come back. Quiet. Do you like the brushless motors? All right, let's go ahead and try a return to home test. See what happens here. We could take it over here a little ways. Do a little distance test. All right, so like 81 meters away, something like that. Let's go ahead and do a return to home. So push this button here. Okay, the return to home has initiated. You can see the little home icon here on the uh, screen. It says we have a strong signal on the, uh, on, the, on the GPS satellites. Okay, it's coming back. Okay, it's... Okay, it's going to go ahead and lower its altitude here. Okay, it's descending. Let's go see how uh, where it lands. See, we took off from the helipad right there, a little drone pad. We can see where the where it lands. Okay, so it stopped and it looks like it's correcting itself. That's good. It did kind of correct itself a little bit. Okay, it stopped again. And it's coming down again. Okay, not bad. I mean, it's within three feet. Within three feet, so not bad. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, take it back up. That's another way you can arm it, it sticks in, in the center there. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can do follow me mode. I'm going to go ahead and take it over here a little bit. And we'll do a follow me mode. See if it'll follow us. We'll go ahead and push the follow me. Insufficient mobile phone GPS. Okay, so. 
and I have my location turned on. Interesting. Okay, let's try a orbit. And it's raised up a little bit to come out here, actually. <laughs> and we'll turn right here. And we're going to go ahead, yes. Okay, so it's going to start orbiting. And it is circling. Let's see how big of a radius it does. So that's the um, orbit mode. And watch out for trees and stuff when you do this. I got some branches over here. Let's see if it... Okay, it looks like it's going to be okay. Yeah, that's fine. So you see it just continues to keep doing an orbit around the shot. Um, and you can change the... You can change your altitude, and it will continue to keep orbiting. So if you just go up or down, it will continue to keep orbiting. Once you move the right stick, though, it should cancel it. Just push on the button there to cancel it, and it locked back into place. That worked great. Let's go ahead and try the um, altitude hold, so no GPS. So now you see it's going to start drifting. See that GPS has been disconnected. Just push that little switch there. See how it's just drifting with the wind? It's going to fly it around a little bit. Nimble little flyer. It's pretty stable. Brushless motors are nice. So we have turned off the uh, GPS. Let's go ahead and turn it back on and see if we can lock it in. Up oh, there it goes. Just lock back into place there with the GPS. <clears throat> see if we can do some uh, some waypoints here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my mobile data back on and see if we can't. Huh, for some reason it's telling me that I have insufficient GPS on my phone to do the waypoints or the follow me, which is really, really interesting. So I've got my location turned on. Let me try to turn the location on and, and, and then off again, see if that does anything. Really strange that it's not letting me do that. Okay, so we're getting a, a beeping now. Our battery is getting lower. Okay, we're at two bars, so it's not going to be able to go uh, very far now because of that. Yeah, it will not do any of those functions there. So let's get a little bit more. Let's take a couple photos. Take a couple photos while we're up here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take a photo. And another photo. Go a little higher. So you're gonna get a constant beeping on the transmitter when your battery's getting low. Wi-Fi has, you know, some lag on it. So we're taking a couple photos here. Bring it back down. Coming back down. See the LEDs are now red flashing, meaning the battery's getting low. We've got two bars on the battery and you can see it shows it on the controller as well. So at this point, the drone won't go within a certain amount of feet when the battery's low. So keep that in mind, just for a safety precaution. And it will return to home if it's past a certain amount of feet. It will fly back uh, when the battery gets low. So keep that in mind when you're flying this. It is cold today, it's in the 30s, so we're not gonna get as much of a flight time, the colder weather.
So for some reason, it's it's completely stable when I, uh, you know, when I'm behind it. But when I go to yaw spin, it gets a little bit wonky. If you watch my yaw spin, see how it just kind of drifts. See that? Not sure why. I calibrated the compass two times, but for some reason, it's getting a little bit, a little bit wonky when I yaw spin. Let's try, and, and, and it won't do any of the, the flight modes when the battery's low either. The VR does not work, keep that in mind. Let's try the headless mode again. Yeah, that's working fine. You see we're yawing, but I'm pushing uh, back on the stick and it's coming back the same direction. So that's pretty nice. If you lose orientation, just go ahead and initiate that. And that way, no matter where the drone is or which way it's facing, when you push back, it's gonna come back. So if we're facing this way, we push back, it's gonna come back. Same way, it's always gonna come back no matter what direction the, uh, the front's facing. Now that can be a little bit confusing when you're flying it using the uh, FPV, so keep that in mind. Go ahead and record another video here while we got a little bit of battery. Um, as far as I know, I don't think there's any way to stop that beeping. And once the battery gets critically low, it's going to return to home uh, by itself. So that's a little safety feature. You can cancel that by pushing the return to home button once that initiates. Let's go ahead and try to fly out here a little ways. We turn the headless mode off. You go ahead and fly out a little ways and see if it actually... Yep, so you see I got a beep there. Now we're at critical. So... Because we're at critical, it's probably gonna come back. Yep, it's coming back on its own. And it's coming right back to home. You can't cancel this by pushing the return to home button. But um, you know, if your battery is that low, you might wanna just let it come back. <laughs> and it's gonna do a landing, so let's bring it back here. And as it's landing with critical low battery, you can still control it. So keep that in mind. I'm just manually controlling it right now. And it is, go ahead and landed. All right, go ahead and stop the recording. Make sure you always stop the recording. Um, that way you save the recording before you turn it off, because if not, you, you'll lose your recording. <clears throat> I'm going to turn off the transmitter here and unplug the uh, quadcopter. All right, guys, let's go over some of the things that I like about the new Snaptane SP700. And let's go over some of the things that I don't like about this quadcopter. Um, I really do like the design of it. I like the build quality. I do like the plastic that's used in it. I like the LEDs. I love the brushless motors. Very good. I'm glad that Snaptane has listened and went ahead and did the brushless motors for this quadcopter. I love this controller. It uh, feels very good in my hands. I love the little phone holder. It works really good with holding my device. I like that it has the little screen on the bottom that has uh, some telemetry data, so you don't have to always rely on just the app. Um, I do like the camera. It's a decent, decent camera. The 2K camera on this one. Um, I do like the way it behaves in the air. It's very docile, very beginner friendly as well as advanced. Um, and I do like the orbit mode and I like the return to home accuracy it was definitely decent. Um, I do like the little look of the face on there with the little camo. It's a really mean looking quadcopter. It's like got a good weight to it. I like the way that the battery plugs into the back. I like that it's using an XT30 connector, which means that you can put this on a hobby grade charger, um, but make sure if you do, you know, you do it correctly and make sure you use the correct settings. Otherwise you may damage the battery. Um, so if you're not really sure, just go ahead and use a stock charger just to be safe. But if you are experienced and you, you feel comfortable using a hobby grade charger, I definitely recommend doing it that way because you'll be able to charge the battery probably 60 to 70% faster than the stock charger it comes with. Now let's go over to some of the things that I don't like about this quadcopter. I don't like the fact that I calibrated the compass twice and it still continued to kind of give me a little bit of like toilet bowl, almost like it was acting like it was glitching. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just a problem with my unit or if this is a problem with all of them. Um, so that part I didn't like. 
Another thing I don't like about this quadcopter is the annoying beeping when it has a low battery. Yes, I do think it's important that it does beep when you have a low battery. However, I just really wish there was a way to turn that off. Maybe if the LED could just keep flashing on the remote. Something to where you don't want to have to have that beeping constantly while you're trying to fly. Um, or even just beep when it's critically low because even when I had half battery, it continued to keep beeping and that definitely was annoying for me. So I guess the final question is, could I recommend this new Snaptain SP700 drone uh, on my channel? Um, that's a really tough one for me. So for this particular quadcopter, because of the experience that I experienced, I really can't recommend this one, guys. I really was rooting for it. You know, it did have the brushless motors. Uh, it does have a cool look to it. It has a nice 2K camera with a really nice remote control with uh, telemetry built into the remote control. I really was rooting for this one. Um, if these, if mine is just a faulty one with the uh, with the GPS and it wasn't giving me that bobbling, um, and it wasn't connecting to my phone's um, GPS, which is really odd that it wouldn't connect to the phone's GPS to use the functions like follow me and um, the waypoints. So I don't know why it wouldn't connect. I, I had everything turned on as far as my location. I followed all the instructions in the manual that it told me. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I'm not sure if it was an app glitch or an app error. Um, but because of those two things, in my personal experience with this quadcopter, I can't recommend this one. Um, make sure you check out other reviews, though, because maybe I just got a faulty unit. That is possible. Um, you know, other than that, I mean, it flew fine. It handled great. Um, the return to home accuracy was pretty decent. I love the way it looks. I love the way it flew. It was stable. Uh, for the most part, and, and unless it just did a little bit of that bobbling. The remote control was really nice. It held my phone really secure. It's adjustable. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Happy New Year. This is the first recorded video in the new year, 2020. I'm so excited for what this year has to bring for the channel and for all of you guys. All I'm going to say, without giving too much of a spoiler alert, is make sure you stay tuned to the channel because I got big things coming very, very soon. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. E-Drone, out.